Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, I've had some questions with the new Kimberbell Love Notes coming out. People have been asking about how to incorporate uh, quilted backgrounds around their embroideries. And for those of you that have Premiere Plus or Premiere Plus 2, there's a very easy way to quickly put quilting in and around your embroidery designs. And I'm going to show you real quick how to do that. So this is our home screen of Premiere Plus 2. Um, in Premiere Plus or Premiere Plus 2 in the Ultra version, if you go up to the Wizards tab, the Wizards tab, you'll open up a bunch of different wizards. We want to find the Quilt Block Wizard. And we're going to open that. And when we open that, we are going to get a wizard. Um, the wizard has some choices for us. Uh, filled quilt block with an inner embroidery. That's the one we're going to pick. We also have some other options, an outline quilt block with a filled inner shape. So if you want to put a shape in there with some quilting or a filled quilt block with an outline inner shape. So if you wanted to do a quilted background and leave a spot open, you could do that. Um, this would just be a full quilted block and then just a shape without any kind of quilting in it. So we are going to pick the filled quilt block with the inner embroidery. We're going to click next. And then we're going to come in here and we're going to find the shape of our uh, block that we're going to do. Since we are working with the Love Notes quilt from Kimberbell, the block that we are going to make is a rectangle. So we're going to click the rectangle shape. This is the, the actual block when we get it all cut down as a rectangle. The one that we need needs to be six and a half inches by four and a half inches. Well, my software is set for millimeters. Some people, you can change it to inches, or if you just hold your cursor over top of that, it will show you what it's supposed to be in inches. You can do, just hold the cursor down and check, or you can calculate it. 25 millimeters equals an inch. So if I need six and a half inches, I'm gonna need a little more than 150 millimeters. So if I put in 160, I'm at 6.3. Let's make it a little bigger, six and a half. And then my B side, I need it to be four and a half. So I'm already at almost four. I'm just gonna notch it up a little. Keep going up, moving my cursor over to check myself until I get it right where I wanna be. Let's try one more up. That's a little bigger, so we'll go down. Actually, yeah, we'll do down. So then this spot right here, and include a cut line around my quilt block. So what that means is it, the embroidery design will actually stitch an outside line around this design, showing you where you need to trim up your quilt block. Now, um, you, want, you can do this or you don't have to do this. If you leave it off, then when you get done stitching it, you'll just come back in and trim off. So the, the quilt blocks for Love Notes have a quarter inch seam. So we just trim off a quarter of an inch from the edge there. You can put this in there and you can go into options and say you want your margin to be, this is on a half an inch. We'd want it to be a quarter of an inch. We just, I'm so close. Right there, perfect. I say, okay, so now if I go in, it's going to actually put another line on the outside of this that's a quarter of an inch away. So I click next. Now it wants us to put our embroidery design in. Um, I'm going to choose my embroidery design and say open. Now my embroidery design is the wrong direction. So I can come in here and I can actually type in and rotate that design the direction I want it to be. I could also mirror it left or right or mirror it up and down. Then it's going to ask me my outline. How far away do I want my margin to be? So how far away do you want that quilting to be from your design? Do you want it to be close, right up against it? Eh, probably not. You do want it to have a little bit of space out. So you determine how far away you want your quilting to be from your design. And remember that millimeters are very small. So five millimeters is only, is less than a quarter of an inch. So it's very close to the edge. Then we'll click next. This is where we get to have the fun part. So we get to choose, do we want there to be a stipple background? Do we want straight line background? Do we want crisscross? Do we want a decorative stitch motif? Um, I'll show you a little bit of each of these. And each of these also have options then that you can go into and adjust your stitch length or your stitch size or how wide you want the spacing to be between each of them. So if we want it to be straight stitching, it would look like that. If you wanted some cross hatching, you could do that. The motif stitches is a little funky. 
um, I genuinely don't use that very often for behind a quilting or behind an embroidery design, but you can. The echo quilting is sort of nice. Similar to the echo quilting, the contoured is just closer lines together. And then um, your shape, which you can go in and change. Most people are probably going to pick stipples. So we can go in there. We can go into the options. Do you want uh, curved or straight? How much do you want your gap to be? I'm going to do curved. Let's make our gap a little smaller just to see what it's going to look like. I want to keep it at a running stitch. Um, and 1.5 millimeter, ugh, I don't really care for a 1.5 millimeter personally. I would at least go up to a two millimeter stitch. I do not like that little short um, stitch sometimes that's used in embroidering. So we adjusted that and we've got a little bit more stippling than we had before. Let's make our gap a little bit bigger just so we can see what it's going to look like. Oh, that's a little too big. So you really sort of have to just play with it so you can get it the way that you want it to be. And when it's, once it's the way you want it to be, oh, I want mine to be a little smaller. Once you've got it the way you want it to be, then you just, oh, that's very fun. Then you're just gonna click finished and it's gonna pop it into your hoop for you. So now, most likely you don't have to do this, but you can go in and pick the correct hoop size for what you need. Let's just pick that one and see how it fits. Oh, it's a little too scoop big. Uh, let's do 240 by 150. There we go. So then what's gonna happen is let's go to home and we will go to design player. We can go to design player and actually watch our design stitch out. So the first thing it's going to do is stitch out our embroidery design because we needed to do that very first. Um, once it's stitched out our embroidery design, it will come in and start doing that quilted background. Once it does the quilted background, it will do the line stitch around it. I picked a lot of quilting, so it's going to take it a minute. And with that much quilting, you probably could go a little bit closer and it'd still be pretty cute. But again, you just need to play with the options. And then it's going to go around again. And then you're going to actually put your ruler right up here and trim it to this line. And then you're not going to see this dead space. That's going to be your seam. So once you're all done there, you just go to File. You can save it if you want to make changes to it or export it. And when you export it up here in the top, you need to make sure the file format is your correct file for your machine. Um, if you need to drop down that menu and pick the correct file format, you can. So it's important to make sure you've chosen the correct file format. Click OK. And then once you've clicked OK, again, remember where you've saved your design. Also very important to remember where you saved your design and name it something that you can remember what it is. Then once you've saved it, you can go ahead and stitch it out. So that's how easy it is to put quilting in and around a pre-existing embroidery design. Um, remember the important parts are to make sure that you make your quilt block the size you want it to be when you're done. Uh, choose the stitching that is to your liking and then export it with the correct file format and, save, and know where you saved it. If you've got any other questions about Premiere Plus or Premiere Plus 2 embroidery software, reach out to us at Sew-A-Lot. I hope this helps.